Welcome back everybody. As you remember in our previous video, we built this uh, contraption, this Lichtenberg burner, for making patterns in wood using an electric arc. And now we're going to try our hand at seeing what kind of damage, I mean what kind of artwork we can produce. And just as a reminder, we are working with very high voltage, and yes, this will kill you. Okay, in preparation for today's events or experiments or accidents, we are going to mix up our super secret lightning solution which consists of some water so we'll get some water okay it's about a cup of water in a beaker and then we take some of this stuff this is BS or baking soda and we put in about uh, is it a tablespoon of baking soda per cup of water? So, yeah, that's about right. When done, we mix it up. Oh, jeez, I hate dropping stuff. If you get too much baking soda in it, it'll just precipitate down to the bottom. You can add more water or uh, just leave it there. Although you don't want to add too much baking soda. Some woods it has a tendency to discolor it. So purple heart it will actually turn green. You can use other solutions such as water and salt. But salt has adverse effects on your uh, wood as well. So, enough of that crap. Let's get to work. Okay, before we put power to it, the wood itself is really not too conductive. It needs the, uh, the solution to give it some con conductivity so that the uh, electricity can flow through it. We'll put some of our solution on here. Let it soak in a bit and see what results we get. I'm going to put it on pretty liberally to start. Let it soak in. And before I forget, we got to bring out our most important piece of safety equipment, that being a beer dispenser. I mean a fire extinguisher. You might want to put the pin back in the handle there too. It's kind of hanging out. Don't want to accidentally trigger it. We have the probes set about six, eight inches apart from each other. Let's put some power to it and see what kind of effect our lightning solution gives us. Uh, we see some burning. There it is. Now we got burning on both sides and they're heading towards each other, fanning out nicely. So once, once you get that, you shut it off. That means it's made contact and you have uh, pretty low resistance through there, so it arcs over. We'll now move it to another position. Let's see what kind of pattern we get from this. Huh, nothing. Let's put some more of our lightning solution on here. Get it around the base of the probes. That's probably too much, but let's experiment and see what happens. Okay, time to move it again. 
it actually came out pretty good as far as doing a burn. Put a little bit more solution on here. Having a lot of solution on it may be detrimental as far as the electricity traveling through the solution and not going deeply into the wood. So we'll see when we do a final cleanup on this. Let's bring in another piece of wood. This time we'll just do one long burn across it and see what it looks like once it's cleaned up. Put our solution on it. Actually, no, this is, see they say you shouldn't burn across grain. It inhibits the, the flow and the burn. It inhibits the electron flow. Well, we'll try it anyway, what the hell. Here we go. Do you see how it tends to fan out to the sides a little bit more than going forward? It's because it's trying to follow the grain. Put a little bit more solution on here. Now I am turning the machine off before I reach in here with a brush to put in conductive water. If not, I would be uh, laying on the ground right now. Here we go again. It's actually working out pretty good crossing the grains without much of a problem. Let's go with a little bit more of our solution down the middle. that should do for this one. Now for the next step. Okay, this is the next step. We're going to clean this board. Use some of our mountain fresh water here. Comes out of the hose, kind of a brownish green. This is from all the heat we've been getting up here. The, uh, we're getting algae growing in the pipes. Okay, we'll dip this, this board in the water and then we'll kind of give it a light brushing. I'm using a small brass brush. Probably too aggressive for it. I don't want to obliterate any of the details, but at the same time, I don't want to spend all day brushing a piece of wood. Let me get something else. Try this paintbrush. Just try and work the work the carbon out of the grooves. Don't want to obliterate the, the details. Well, that's kind of cool. It's like a lightning bolt going through a tree. Maybe. Let's check out our first piece, see how it comes out. Same routine, get it wet, brush it down. I'm sure over time I'll build up my techniques on this burning process and be able to come up with some better ways and better ideas to get better to get better outcomes.
There we go. Kind of looks like a worm that crawled through an electric fence and a blender. Then got run over by a semi truck. Poor worm. Now with my CNC router, I've been making signs. Well, this is a clock, but uh, I've been making signs for around the place. But they kind of look cool with some Lichtenberg patterns burned in on them as well. So we'll give that a try also. So that, my friends, is Lichtenberg pattern burning. It was uh, developed in 1777 by a feller named George Lichtenberg. I think he's from Germany. Pretty sure. But uh, he had noticed patterns in the dust where electricity or static electricity had been discharged. So uh, he investigated it, built a static electricity generator, and uh, did experiments, came up with this uh, Lichtenberg pattern. So this has been around for quite some time, just not the use of microwaves and high voltage transformers. They used uh, static electricity generators. So they really couldn't burn wood. But uh, we are fortunate enough to have high tech and stuff that will kill us and we can put it to use and burn wood. Whatever happened to matches? Yeah, oh well. Now just per chance this has an application in mining. I'm going to run some high voltage through this ore. This is high iron sulfide content. So we should see something. So this is before putting in any fluid. Let's give it a try. I'm going to back up. You can stay right there. You might be safe. Okay, nothing's happening. Didn't expect dirt to conduct much electricity. Well, let's put some of our magic solution in here. Okay, we should have a conductive path between our probes now. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Holy crap. Well, it looks like our probe got hot and melted right through the bottom of my uh, my pan. But it did burn quite a bit. Whew, that's hot. And I smell sulfur, so it was liberating the sulfur from the uh, iron sulfide. Once it liberated the iron from the iron sulfide, the iron became a conductor. But yeah, just burned holes in the bottom of the pan. Far out. Well, that pretty much concludes this series on Lichtenberg pattern burning. At least until I get around to doing it again. Let me know how you enjoyed it. Let me know how you didn't enjoy it. Let me know if you don't give a damn. Have a good one. Take care and see ya.